Hello, in the following video I'm going to be showing you the Visual Studio Code extensions I use for Shopify development. The first one we're going to take a look at is Shopify Liquid by Shopify over here. You can see that there are other Liquid extensions as well. However, this one is the official one from Shopify, so this is the one we want to install. There are other extensions because Liquid can also be used outside of Shopify. So for example, if you were creating a website and you wanted to use a template editing, you can select Liquid for that. And those other extensions might be useful for those situations. However, if you're going to be focusing on Shopify development, the one I recommend you use is the official one from Shopify. Now let's start taking a look at the features, starting with the first one, syntax highlighting. This is a very simple one. It adds syntax highlighting to Liquid files. This is using the highlighter officially maintained by Shopify, as you can see here. And what this means is that when you create a liquid file or when you open a liquid file in VS Code, you're going to be seeing it syntax highlighted. If you disable this extension over here and reload, you're going to see that this looks like plain text because the highlighting is all coming from this extension. The next one is documentation of hover, and you can see it in action right over here. What this does is that when you hover over any filter, variable, or tag that comes built in with Shopify's flavor of liquid, you are going to see this pop-up window telling you what it does. This reduces the necessity of going back and forth between your code and the documentation page. You can see here that uh, I can do this for this image URL filter, or for this settings variable, and even for this render tag over here. The same also happens in section files. So if I, for example, hover over this type image picker, I can see what this does. I can also hover over translation literals like this one to see what the value of this is. For example, all of this gets translated to first image and second image in the case of this one, for example. Next, this extension also adds code completion. So for example, here, if I type string here and type the pipe to add a filter, I can see here the different filters that I have access to. For example, if I start writing up, I can see up case. If I start writing down, I can see down case. And then of course, if I select this, I can hover over it to see what it does. I can also press Control and Enter to see a list of all the possible filters that I can add over here. And it also works with global objects. For example, the product object, I can type this here, and then I can see all the available properties that I have for the product. And if I select one and I want to know exactly what it does, I can see it over here. This one is not really that descriptive, but for example, if we select price, we can see here the full description of what it does. And this also works with settings. So if I type settings, I can see here the list of global settings defined in settings schema.json. So all the settings from here, this extension will be auto completing them for me over here. And I can hover over any of these to see the type of this property. This also works with settings in this file. So if I type section that settings, we can see here all the different settings that I have access to in this section file. So for example, if I select this one, I can hover over it to see its type right away. This extension also adds features for code navigation. So for example, here you can see that I'm trying to access the section image banner.css. And if I press command and click, I get navigated to this file right away. This extension is also context aware. So as you know, depending on how you're trying to render a file or access a file, Shopify will try to look for it in one directory or the other. So for example, here, these meta tags, if I press command and click, it knows that this is a snippet and it looks for it in the snippets directory as it should. We're here. And if you're trying to access a file that doesn't exist, the extension will flag that right away. So for example, if I remove the S here, you can see that now this has this red underline. So overall, this is a very complete extension that Shopify actively maintains and adds new features to every now and then. The extension is open source, so you can take a look at its code if you want from this link in the documentation, which I'll be leaving in the video description. The next extension we are going to see is Liquid Snippets. So this is the full name of the extension. Shopify Liquid Template Snippets. And I'm going to install this and let's quickly see this in action. So what this extension does is that in Liquid files, you gain access to a bunch of snippets that can speed up your team development process. So for example, here, if I type assign, I get the structure of an assign. By the way, and I can say my variable is equal to one. I can do the same for a for loop, for example. 
I can send my item in collection or something like that. And I can do the same for paginate and many of the other liquid structures. You can see that in cases such as this one, it can save you a bit of time because this is very proposed to write. And you may also not remember the exact way this is written because you don't use pagination that often. This is also useful when writing the schema for a section. So I can type underscore schema to get the verbose structure of a schema. And I can type my section and keep pressing tab to complete the other fields. I can also type blocks to get the same verbose structure for blocks. And under settings here, I can type underscore in any type of setting, such as checkbox, to get the structure of our checkbox settings with all of its properties. I can type my checkbox and keep pressing tab to complete the other properties or remove the ones I submit. This is particularly useful for settings you don't use that often. For example, range over here, it has a lot of required properties that you might not remember right away. The extension itself is also open source and you can find a full list of all of its snippets over here in its documentation. I'll be linking to this in the video description. The next extension we are going to see is useful for Shopify app development, in particular for Shopify apps that contain Shopify functions. So here I'm going to look for the GraphQL and the one I'm going to install is the one from the GraphQL foundation. You have to double check that it is this one because the first one that shows up is not from the GraphQL Foundation. So when I install this one, I also get the syntax highlighter installed, also from the GraphQL Foundation. And now if we open extensions and this one and look for chrome.graphql, this should be syntax highlighted. However, the most interesting part is not this, but the autocomplete we get. So you can see that if I press enter, I see all the properties that I can query. For example, if I get shop, and it also tells me that I cannot query this right away. I have to get a field for shop. So I can try getting local time. Once again, it tells me that I cannot just get a local time. I have to get one of its properties. So let's try getting date. And now I can get date. It can also tell you if you have a typo. So for example, if I try getting dates, it tells me that this property doesn't exist. And for properties that exist, I can hover over them to see a definition of what this is in this pop-up window. This happens for anything here. And where is all of this coming from? How does the extension know which properties I have available in this query? Where you can see that in .graphqlrc.js, Shopify is indicating to this extension to look for a schema.graphql. And if we go to this file, we can see all of the properties we have access to. And above each, we have a short description of what they do. This description is what you get when you hover over a property in the query. And if a property is not here, then the extension assumes it is not available. And the last extension we're going to see is Prettier. This is a very popular extension and you might already have it installed already. But if not, what this does is that it formats the code. So it makes sure that you don't have to keep fixing the indentation, replacing double quotes with single quotes or vice versa and things like that. So after installing it, I will go to settings, I'll open the UI version of them, and I will look for format. The default formatter, I will select prettier over here, and then I will toggle on this format and save. Now let's see if I try the this to the indentation as soon as I save, nothing happens, and that is because here now I have to configure the default formatter for if it files, I just have this option, so I will select this. And now if I save, this gets out of formatted right away. Send up here, it gets out of formatted. Also, if you want to make sure that everybody is formatting the code the same, in your project you can add dot prettier rc the JSON in the heart of your directory and over here add your configuration. This is the configuration that Shopify is using for the own their open source theme. So you can take this as an example if you want. So there you have it. These are the extensions I use for Shopify development. If you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I'll see you all in the next one.